Thank you very much. The Committee and the Subcommittee will now receive testimony from our second panel. I would like to introduce the members of our panel, uh, the witnesses that are here to offer information about First Kuwaiti's labor practices from their perspective. Mr. John Owens is the former First Kuwaiti construction foreman on the Embassy Project, and Mr. Rory Mayberry is the former First Kuwaiti subcontractor medic on the Embassy Project. Thank you both for being here today for sharing your testimony and experiences. I know it took courage to come here and to participate. Uh, as for your full statements, they're going to be entered onto the record and the transcript. Uh, you may give a brief uh, account of that if you like. Uh, you have five minutes to talk. You may want to summarize your testimony so you try to get it into the five minutes. I'll try not to cut you off, but may remind you if you're going over. It's the policy of the committee to, and the uh, subcommittee to square you before you testify. So I ask you to raise your right hand and stand if you would. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. The record will please reflect that both witnesses have answered in the affirmative. Uh, again, I, I ask you to proceed and remember the five-minute rule if you could. Mr. Owens, I ask you to go first. Thank you to Chairman Waxman and Chairman Tierney and the members of the full committee for inviting me to testify here today. My statement will address labor abuse, human trafficking, and other concerning issues that I personally witnessed on the construction site at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Okay. Fine, uh, thank you. My name is John Owens. I've worked on construction projects for many years, and since 2002 I've worked on U.S. Embassy projects. My specialty is architectural finishing. After I finished the U.S. government, working with the U.S. government on the construction of the embassy in Cambodia, I went looking for a new project and I signed on with First Kuwaiti to work on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. They signed me on as a general foreman on the construction site. In all, I was employed by First Kuwaiti for approximately eight months from November through June, from November 05 to June 06. When I arrived at the site of the U.S. Embassy, the biggest thing that hit me right off the bat was I wanted to know where all the Americans were. Based on my experience working on other embassies, I was used to seeing more Americans on site to manage the construction and direct the workers. It turns out there were two other Americans on site. However, they were not employed by First Kuwaiti. They were employed by subcontractors. I'd like to take a moment to describe conditions on the site in a little more detail. This was a man camp and by nature not the most pleasant places to be, yet the conditions were deplorable beyond even what a working man should tolerate. Foreign workers were packed into trailers very tight. There was insufficient equipment and basic needs like shoes and gloves. If a construction worker needed a new pair of shoes, he was told, no, do with what you have by First Kuwaiti managers. The contract for these workers said they had to work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, with some time off on Friday for prayers. A few people from India told me they were making $240 a month. A guy from Sierra Leone told me he got paid $300 a month. A Pakistani worker told me he made $900 a month, but he had to pay additional costs for his own work permits and visas. And afterwards, he told me he probably averaged about $300 a month. Many of the workers were verbally and physically abused, intimidated, and had their salaries docked for as much as three days' pay for reasons such as being five minutes late sitting down on the job, and other stuff. Because I was the only American on site working for First Kuwaiti, many of the workers thought I had some kind of power that I could help them with their problems. Many workers often came to me and told me that they hadn't been paid overtime, that their salaries were short, and they also came to me with their health problems, often asking me if I could go off site to get some medication for them. It's not uncommon for a construction company to use native workers or even foreign workers to build an embassy. I've witnessed this 
at other embassy construction sites that I've worked on. However, I do believe that if more Americans were on site at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, the abuses I witnesses would not have been taking place. No American company would ever treat people the way I saw people being treated on that job. As I think of it, given the size of this job, my experience tells me that the State Department would usually have far more American staff members on hand to oversee the construction project. I'd like to touch briefly on the issues of human trafficking, uh, human trafficking that I believe I witnessed there. When flying from, from Kuwait to Baghdad, I saw a bunch of workers in the boarding area with boarding passes for Dubai. I was the only one in the group that had a boarding pass that said Iraq on it. When I asked the first Kuwaiti manager, he told me to be quiet and don't say anything. If Kuwaiti Customs knew they were going to Iraq, they wouldn't let them on the plane. When we landed, these workers were taken away on buses. There was nobody manning the custom stations, and I just walked through without checking. Nobody asked for my passport. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I believe that I had more experience in building embassies than anybody else on the site. The embassy was not far enough along for me to use my specific skills, so First Kuwaiti put me to work as a security li liaison among other tasks. I think the American people might understand what was going through my head over there as I watched this abusive and unprofessional practice taking place. I kept thinking it would get better. I kept telling myself it would get better, but after more time had passed and things didn't get better, I felt bad all the time, and I realized it was time to resign and maybe speak up for those who don't have a voice. This ends my statement. I'd be pleased to take your questions. Thank you, Mr. Owen.